All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to look at five different types of chemical reactions. Um, and we're just going to look at some of the key features of each type of chemical reaction. So that way that when you are given a chemical reaction, you can easily, easily identify them. OK, so the first type we have synthesis. OK, second, we have single replacement. You have double replacement. Fourth is decomposition. Decomp. And then fifth, we have combustion. Okay. So let's talk about each of the five and some of the key characteristics of each of the chemical reactions. So the first one we're going to look at synthesis. Okay. So now synthesis reactions are basically reactions where you have smaller pieces combining to make a, a larger chemical or a larger compound. So like, for example, the reaction of, or the synthesis of water. All right. So because we're good chemists, we're going to make sure that this is balanced. All right. So here we have H2 plus O2 yields H2O. Right. And so if you notice, if you kind of pay attention, you have these smaller elements here that comes up to make a larger compound. All right, so this is a synthesis reaction. Um, and so here's a, just another example of a synthesis reaction where you have, uh, for example, you have H2 plus CO2 and it gives you H2CO3, okay? And so this reaction here, um, once again, it's a synthesis, re synthesis reaction. So where we have these smaller pieces here that comes together to create a larger compound. All right. And so that's just the, the big bottom line of synthesis reactions. Now, number two. All right. Kind of going a little bit out of order from the list I gave you. You have decomposition reactions. Now, decomposition reactions are the exact opposite of synthesis reaction. So let's just say, like, if you talk about the decomposition of water, so like H2O, right? And it will be decomposed to its smaller pieces. So here we got a large compound, and it breaks down to the smaller pieces that the larger compound is made of. So you have something like this. Um, another example is that we could look at maybe the decomposition of, let's say, magnesium oxide, so MgO, right? And it will decompose to both magnesium and oxygen gas. So we have our larger compound here, and it's broken up into the smaller pieces, all right? So this is the idea of decomposition. It's just You're just decomposing, making smaller bit, bits. Now, the third one um, we're going to talk about is called single replacement reaction. Or sometimes you see it's called single displacement reactions. All right. Tomato, tomato. OK, so with these reactions, you basically have. Um, so let me just show you an example. So let's say we have zinc plus HCl. All right. Yields zinc chloride plus H2. Now, there's a certain pattern that comes up, and then you will notice, and I'll show you more examples showing this. In a single replacement reaction, you typically have an element reacting with a compound, okay? Now, specifically what happens is, is that this element is going to be replace one of the elements within the compound, all right? And so in this case, zinc is going to replace the hydrogen. And so when you look at the other side, what you'll find is that you have this zinc here, all right, which used to be by itself, now is with the chlorine, and now you have hydrogen that's by itself here, okay? And um, the pattern that this kind of works out is that metals will replace metals. Non-metals will replace non-metals, okay? So kind of show you another example of what I'm talking about. So let's just say we have potassium, plus, um, actually, I don't want to write this in green. All right, so let's say we have potassium 
plus let's say we have gold gold to oxide right so here we have a an element all right with a compound okay since potassium is a metal is going to replace the metal within the compound so this potassium is going to replace the gold okay and then what you're going to have is that you know just keeping the same charges of everything so what you're going to have at the end is that you're going to have potassium oxide plus gold okay and so we have the potassium that you see that's over here all right and then you have the gold that's sitting by itself Okay, so that's just the way it kind of works. And once again, we can also do non-metals, replacing non-metals. So like, for example, if we had, let's say, oh, I don't like the green. Sorry, guys, kind of being choosy about my colors. All right, let's say we have, um, let's see, uh, we have NaI plus F2, okay? So... Once again, we have this compound with an element, okay? And so what we'll find here is that, well, here's your element, and this is going to replace the non-metal of the compound. So this um, fluorine is going to replace the iodine, okay? And so the way that you write it, at the end, you have NaF plus, and then you have iodine that sits by itself. Of course, these equations will be balanced, but just for the sake of just kind of showing you how these type of reactions work, I'm not really, you know, all that been out trying to balance them. But here you have the fluorine. The fluorine is now with the sodium here, and then you have the iodine that sits by itself. So that's just the gist of single replacement reactions. All right, the next type, we have double replacements. or sometimes it's called double displacement reactions. All right, so much like single replacements, you have something that's being uh, replaced, but in this case, you have two sets, all right? So like, for example, let's just say we have, um, here's this chemical form. We have NaCl plus K2O, okay? So here, what you notice is that we have a compound reacting with another compound, all right? Now, this is usually um, bigger for aqueous solution type of chemistry, but just for to illustrate the point here. So what you'll see is that um, you have two ionic compounds, all right? So here's an ionic compound where we have the metal, the non-metal. Here's another ionic compound where you have the metal and a non-metal. And what's going to happen, they're essentially going to switch partners. All right, and so you could think about this one of two ways. It's either that you have the metal switching places or you want to think about the non-metal switching places. Either or is going to get you the same answers at the end of the day, all right? And so when I write the compound or the products, all right, so the Na is no longer going to be bonded with the chlorine, but the Na is going to be bonded with the non-metal of this, of the second compound, so it's going to be bonded with this oxygen. So we can't forget about our ionic compound um, naming or rules. So you have Na2O. So now you have the sodium that's with the oxygen, okay? And then now we have this potassium that's going to be bonded with this chlorine here. So we have KCl. All right, and so here is just an example of a double replacement reaction. I'll do another one. So let's just say we have LiBr, so lithium bromide. It is going to react with, let's say it's going to react with magnesium sulfide. Okay, so just kind of pay attention to what's going on here. So here we have your metal, lithium is your metal, magnesium is your metal, so we know that these two is gonna switch places. Or if you wanna think about the non-metals, well, we know bromine is a non-metal, sulfide is a non-metal, or and so we could have it where that these two are switching places. It doesn't matter how you do it. Once one of them switch places, you'll get the same answer. So let's just say, let's just think about this from the metals point of view. So I'm gonna switch the places of lithium and magnesium. 
So that means magnesium is now going to be bonded with this bromine. So I'm going to have MgBr2. So remember, we always must think about charges. So, um, And then um, lithium is now going to be bonded with sulfide. So we have Li2S. And so that's just the bottom line with this chemical prob um, equation. All right, so double replacement, we have two compounds bonded to one another, and these compounds, or two compounds are going to react with one another, and these two compounds, ionic compounds specifically, they will switch partners, all right? Now, the last one, but not least, so our fifth one is combustion reaction. Now, with combustion reaction, it's basically any reaction where O2 is a reactant, okay? Once you have O2 as a reactant, it's a combustion reaction. And now oftentimes you think about combustion being something that blows up or fire, flame, excitement, and stuff like that, but that's not always the case, all right? So like, for example, when iron, when iron rusts, all right, it's a combustion reaction. How do we know that? Well, O2 is a reactant, okay? Um, many of you guys seen this reaction before, but when you have magnesium reacting with oxygen, all right, we get magnesium oxide. How do we know that this is a combustion? Well, O2 is a reactant. All right, so um, oxygen is fed in and we, we get this product at the end. Now, what I want to talk about specifically is a special type of reaction, a special type of combustion reaction. All right, and so... We're looking at combustion reaction of what we call a hydrocarbon. Okay, now hydrocarbons are basically any compounds that have some number of carbon reacting, uh, bonded to some number of hydrogen. Okay, so sometimes you see a CHs or you see you have like CHs and may have some O's, but regardless, these are what we call hydrocarbons. Now, when you combust a hydrocarbon, they make a very specific um, products, okay? So, for example, let's say we have um, the combustion of C3H8, okay? So this is the combustion of propane. Um, it reacts with O2. So anytime we're talking about combustion, we know that's reacting with O2. Now, anytime you have a combustion of a hydrocarbon, they always make carbon dioxide plus H2O. Always. Okay? That never changes. So, and it doesn't really matter what hydrocarbon that we're talking about. So here's propane. Let's say we have the combustion of methane. Methane is CH4. All right, combustion, that means it has an O2 as a reactant. Its product is CO2 plus H2O. Let's say we're talking about the combustion of glucose. C6H12O6 plus combustion, that means there's O2. The combustion of glucose, you have the product CO2 plus H2O. I mean, this is, what's, what's this reaction? Cellular respiration? All right, something that we learned in biology. You have glucose plus oxygen, and yields carbon dioxide and water. That's always the case. What about if we're talking about, you say, the combustion of benzene, which is C6H6, all right, where it combusts, so that means it's reacting with oxygen. What are the products? It's always CO2 plus H2O, all right? So the combustion of hydrocarbon always gave you the same products. All right, so those are the five types of chemical reactions. So just to quickly kind of review what we have going on here, the five different types. So you see right here, you have, um, you have synthesis. All right, then you have single replacement. You have double replacement. You have decomp. And then lastly, you have combustion, okay? Now the first one with synthesis, as I said before,
We said this says you have two smaller elements or two smaller compounds. They combine together to make a larger compound, okay? With decomposition, you have a larger compound that's broken down into smaller compounds or elements, um, whatever the case may be. Single replacement, you basically where you have a an element that replaces a element within a compound. All right, so either a metal replaces a metal ion within a compound, or non-metal replaces a, a non-metal ion within a compound. But it's just a single replacement. Double replacements, you typically have two compounds and they're switching partners. So that's the way you kind of think about it, like switching dance partners or whatever the case be. And then combustion, lastly, is when you usually have oxygen as a reactant. All right, so that's just, just a typical combustion reaction. But then you have a special type of combustion reaction to combustion of a hydrocarbon. And when we have that, we see here that the product is always H2O and CO2. All right, and as I said, that's only true for the combustion of a hydrocarbon.